Thank you. Our members thank you for your service, your dedication, your hard work in responding to this serious uh, humanitarian crisis unfolding before us. As you both have said, the United States plays a critical role in uh, the international response as the largest donor country, uh, having contributed more than $3 billion. But as I mentioned earlier, we also have a responsibility to ensure that we are being good stewards of uh, U.S. taxpayer money and that these funds are being used to maximize efficacy and transparency. How much of that $3 billion has gone directly to neighboring countries or directly to uh, NGOs and implementing uh, partners on the ground? And how much has gone through multilateral initiatives through uh, UN appeals? And I will ask you to respond. It seems that the majority of our assistance, from what I have read, actually goes through the UN and third party implementing partners. Um, also, while it was positive that the UN Security Council passed resolutions 2139 and 2165 calling upon all parties to allow delivery of humanitarian assistance and authorizing the UN to carry out relief delivery across these uh, conflict lines, that is really a fanciful notion to, to think that the Assad regime, ISIL, al-Nusra, other belligerent uh, uh, actors are actually going to adhere to these resolutions. Yet since those resolutions passed, the U.S. has been going into the war zones and uh, the most difficult uh, to reach areas of Syria. How are these resolutions of full access being enforced? Uh, we have seen reports that ISIL and others have gotten some of this assistance or that implementing partners are forced to go through middlemen uh, to get some of uh, to get to some of these uh, uh, most dangerous areas, do we have an idea of how much of our assistance is being co-opted uh, by these uh, belligerent actors or going through middlemen? What kind of visibility do we have? How can we ensure that the billions of dollars that we are providing are reaching the intended recipients and not falling into the wrong hands? And also, do we have any oversight over, over how these U.N. agencies operate? Is there a transparency or reporting requirements for the agencies or implementing partners? Or is it more of a case of, well, our responsibility ends once we hand the money over to, uh, to the U.N.? And finally, what are the reporting requirements for the NGOs directly funded by the U.S. government? Or do we have enough oversight uh, mechanisms? Uh, are they sufficient? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman uh, Ross Layden. And that, that's a critical question. And I'm, I'm really glad you brought it up because I think we actually have a good news story there. Um, it's always important that, we, that our aid gets to the right people. And we realize the challenges in, uh, in, in this crisis. So we have actually upped the ante and increased our uh, systems for overseeing that. So in addition to the regular quarterly and annual reports, we actually have required now weekly reports from our partners where they identify particular issues. And remember, in Syria, we are working with partners that are experienced, that have worked in these kind of areas before. Uh, and, and, and know how to work in these areas. And they are careful about taking risk, but they also understand the importance of oversight. So they have instituted multiple systems to ensure that oversight. They work through local partners, but ones that they know, they get their regular reports. But in addition to that, because it is a relatively sophisticated society, Syria was a uh, middle-income country, really, and people have cell phones and so on. So we actually have a system where when food is delivered, they can send a picture taken from the cell phone with the barcode so we know exactly where it went and when it arrived. Well, thank you. Let me we interrupt get you here We've got multiple systems like that and, uh, going on. And let me ask about a majority of assistance. Does it go through the, to the U.N. and third-party implementing partners or directly to the partners? Thank, and thank you for that question, uh, uh, Chairman. The, about 72 percent of that $3 billion goes through U.N. mechanisms. Uh, about $750 million goes to NGOs. 
uh, through a, a, a joint effort, really, in terms of collaboration. You know our number one humanitarian objective in this crisis is to get as much aid through as many channels as we possibly can. Whoever is best placed in certain circumstances are the ones that we ask to deliver. Obviously, to the extent that they are comfortable delivering, given all the challenges that are actually there. You asked in particular about the, the crossing lines and cross-border uh, ranking member, Deutsch. Um, since the resolutions have passed in the Security Council, we have had about 54 of those aid shipments reach about 600,000 people in terms of the cross-border efforts. That doesn't mean that we are keeping up with need, though, so I don't want you to be left with a good news story. The needs are vastly outstripping the humanitarian aid that we are able to provide. Tom mentioned the enhanced monitoring. We, too, on the, the UN, at least the UN Refugee Agency and others that we support, have asked for enhanced monitoring plans. In Thank terms you. Of diversion. So um, my, okay. my time is up. 